All right, thank you and welcome everybody to uh, Sandy Barber's uh, press conference here via Zoom. Um, we are excited to have all of you here and I will pass it along to Sandy for some opening statements, opening comments. Yeah, thanks everybody for, uh, for joining. Um, as I said to our, our all staff uh, uh, yesterday, it was great to see everybody's uh, smiling faces. So I need a few more smiles out there uh, from, uh, from you guys. Uh, there we go. That's better. Thank you. Um, anyway, um, obviously these are these are challenging uh, challenging times, and uh, I've uh, in the course of my almost forty year career in the last twenty six uh, uh, as an athletic director, uh, I've I've managed and led through hurricanes and earthquakes and protests and uh, but but nothing uh, nothing like this. Uh, this uh, is uh, is obviously um, kind of a, a once in a lifetime, hopefully a once in a lifetime thing for for all of us, no matter what we're uh, what line of work that that we're in. Uh, I certainly hope that all of you are are safe and and well, and and uh, and your families as, as well. And for those of you who who have uh, close friends or family who are first responders or in the healthcare, uh, please know that uh, that we're uh, our, our prayers uh, are, are with them and uh, hope uh, that they are staying uh, staying safe and, and well um, uh, as well. So from the beginning, um, and uh, we can we can maybe talk about what uh, what what we think the beginning is, but from the beginning, this has always been about um, our, our people. Um, obviously, it's about uh, safety and health and welfare, and um, you know the the NCA uh, SAC National SAC put out a letter uh, yesterday that I think you all should uh, should go and read, um, and it you know it really poignantly said. Uh, that this was not about uh, cutting short, uh, this is not about sports, and this was not about cutting short student opportunities, this was actually about protecting them. Uh, and I think that that's, uh, that's really, really well, well said. Uh, but we've also, um, you know, the fact that, that Penn State and Penn State Intercollegiate Athletics uh, has a very strong set of values uh, and, and longstanding, this is nothing new, uh, for Penn State, I think has really served us well. Many of the decisions that we've had to make and, and had to make quickly uh, have been, uh, the execution may not have been easy, uh, but, but what we needed to do has been um, because we've based it, uh, based it on our values and, and, uh, and moved forward uh, relatively quickly. As I've already said, uh, the priority in every aspect of, uh, of what we're doing and what we're focused on uh, right now is the health and, and safety and wellness uh, of first and foremost students, uh, and then certainly our, uh, our staff, uh, our, our intercollegiate athletics one team, uh, and, and then certainly um, our, our community as well. So we are focused in everything we are doing as a department uh, on uh, making sure that our students who are now uh, learning uh, remotely, being taught remotely, that they have all the conditions uh, for success that they need, uh, both uh, both academically um, as well as uh, as well as athletically, to the degree that uh, that we can in, in this remote situation. Uh, we're very pleased uh, that uh, and supportive that the NCA uh, has uh, extended the the eligibility um, of our spring sport uh, student athletes. Uh, and uh, and we are certainly um, going to going to support that throughout our uh, our, our spring sport uh, portfolio. Uh, obviously disappointed that uh, uh, all that our winter and spring uh, sport seasons were were cut short at various different uh, points in time. Uh, frankly disappointed that um, our fall sports who were were headed into a variety of different uh, spring activities. Um, that those were cut short, that, that all of our students don't have the opportunity right now to, to do what it is uh, they love from an athletics pursuit uh, standpoint. Um, but certainly in, in that moment, um, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, actually three weeks ago today, uh, that, uh, you know, obviously our student athletes were crushed. Uh, and, uh, and whether you want to talk about uh, athletics administration or coaches or uh, throughout the university 
or also including obviously our, our community, our alumni, uh, our donors, our fans, our ticket holders, we're all heartbroken um, and continue to be uh, for, uh, for, for those, those lost opportunities. Um, you know, our winter sports were poised uh, to, uh, to have uh, an incredible postseason uh, across the board. So many uh, things, uh, those young men and young women gave us uh, such a great winter, uh, and, uh, and we were poised to have a great, great postseason. Um, and we'll hold on to, uh, to the memories of those seasons and, and, and celebrate them in the right way. And obviously, we had uh, a number of our spring sports who we had high, high hopes for. Uh, so we're, uh, one of the things that we're doing is, is looking at uh, how, whether it's virtually or ultimately in person, how we celebrate uh, and honor not only our seniors, um, who won't be back, uh, some of whom won't be back with us, uh, but, but all of our student athletes and all of our teams uh, for, uh, for what was, even, even in a shortened manner, was an incredible, an incredible year. So uh, with that, I'll, uh, I'll let Chris take it over and take questions. First one is from Nubias Wilborn. If I can get him actually unmuted. He's not seeming to want to work right now. Uh, from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. WJNC-TV, IFB. Hold that thought. Oh, hello? There you go, New Bias. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, I guess a two-part question. One, have you guys set up a plan for football in particular to cover, if, heaven forbid, are any games to cover the workers? And what have you done to kind of cover workers that have missed for spring games, like volleyball and things of that nature? Yeah, so our um – our president, uh, Dr. Barron, uh, addressed that holistically for the entirety of the university, uh, and that was that uh, uh, that all uh, all employees at the university, uh, and uh, there is a, a way to cover our wage payroll, which I think are the are the kinds of workers that you're you're talking about for our events, um, that they are guaranteed uh, their pay through April 30th. So, um, as a university. Uh, we've we've made that decision uh, and are certainly helping all all of our employees in that way. Next question is from Corey Geiger, Altoona Mirror. Hi, Sandy. Thanks for uh, taking the time to do this. Absolutely, Corey. Sandy. Sandy, what is your feeling right now on whether there will be a college football season, and if so, might it be pushed back to some degree or even shortened? Yeah, so so Corey, really, I mean, uh, right right now, we we don't have those answers uh, in terms of of when. And so, what we're doing uh, is we're spending our time number one on the things that we do know, things that we have certainty uh, around, uh, and then we are also uh, looking at all the analytics, uh, talking to all the experts uh, that you know that we have at our disposal uh, to, to understand whatever the time timing is, what are our time frames? What do we need for a uh, safe and healthy return to play for student athletes? Not in terms of uh, exact dates, but in terms of time frames. How long do we need for our fall sports uh, to come in and restore fitness uh, and then obviously health and safety to, uh, to return to play. We also know that those decisions about what the point in time will be uh, will obviously be guided, guided by, uh, by health and safety. Uh, we hope that that's uh, sooner than later, uh, but the, the work that we're doing will prepare us for whenever that is, whenever that date is, uh, that we then know what kind of ramp up we need, uh, how we might fit uh, a, uh, a football season, a volleyball season, or whatever uh, whatever season it is, um, into into a time frame. Uh, we're we're looking at uh, no matter when that is, uh, how we get those season seasons in, and obviously from uh, from a revenue standpoint, uh, football is. Uh, you've always heard me talk about that that we're uh, we're not a football school. We're an excellence school. Um, that we embrace uh, excellence across all 31 of our programs. But clearly, uh, football drives the train from a financial standpoint, and so we're looking at whenever we get the all clear, how do how do we put the football season in? Josh Moyer, Center Daily Times. 
Hey, Sandy, how are you doing? Um, I'm doing great. Uh, I, I'm very energized by uh, by uh, uh, all of the, all the challenges here. We engaged with uh, uh, over uh, almost 400 of our uh, ICA employees yesterday via Zoom. Obviously, learning a lot of technology. Uh, also had uh, uh, an all uh, student uh, Zoom with them yesterday. Other than uh, other than desperately needing a haircut, I'm doing great. Josh, how about yourself? <laughs> Uh, no haircut needed, thankfully. Uh, yeah, yeah. Could have called that one. <laughs> but, uh, I, I do have a two-part question here, Sandy. Um, you, you alluded to it earlier, but, um, you know, President Eric Barron announced last week that, that future furloughs and, and layoffs are not, up the, not off the table. For the athletic department, which can sometimes be insulated from those things, does that also hold true? And, and will you be taking a similar approach to Iowa State by um, asking your coaches to take a temporary pay cut or, or taking a pay cut yourself? to reduce payroll. Yeah, so uh, we, we've taken this in two, uh, uh, in two buckets, if you will. And I talked about it before, kind of the known and the unknown. Uh, and uh, we've spent the better part of, uh, of the last couple of weeks making sure that we fully understood uh, uh, fiscal year 20 uh, and what, uh, what our uh, shortfalls might be from a revenue standpoint. Some of those have been well documented uh, from, a, from a conference level. Uh, and, uh, and then also looking at our own, uh, you know, closer, closer to home, uh, both expense uh, and revenue. So we feel like we've got a good handle on that. And, uh, and thanks to, uh, um, to some expense savings that we obviously will have from, uh, from not recruiting, from not having events uh, here in the, in the spring, uh, and the fact that uh, we have over the course of the last uh, five years built up uh, our, our reserves so that we do have, uh, I wouldn't call it robust, uh, but it's certainly an adequate reserve. Uh, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be in good shape uh, for fiscal year 20. So then you move into the unknown. Uh, as it relates to, to 2021. And, uh, and certainly we're, we're doing all the analysis so that we're prepared. Uh, we're doing some uh, scenario planning uh, so that we're prepared. Uh, but uh, at, at this point, we're, uh, we're in decent shape coming out, of, uh, coming out of 20. Rich Scarcella, Red Eagle. Hi, Sandy. I'm glad to hear that you're doing well. Um, Thanks, Rich. You mentioned... You mentioned um, I touched on the financial ramifications and I was just wondering if the football season is not played this year, um, is there a possibility that a sport or sports would be dropped? Is that, is, does that exist? And also secondly, uh, from a personal standpoint, uh, would you be in favor or would you be okay with playing football games in an empty stadium? Uh, yeah, so let me handle the, 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 the first one first. Um, and actually, it's a question I got from our student athletes last night. Uh, and, uh, and obviously, that's in response to um, everybody kind of going to doomsday uh, from a, uh, uh, from a uh, whether or not we would uh, have the opportunity from a revenue standpoint to, to access the revenues that come to us. Um, primarily from football, but we, we have several other uh, sports at Penn State that obviously bring us some revenue, but not of not of that magnitude. Uh, and and my, my answer was, uh, you know, a little bit <laughs> how I've already answered uh, some of these questions. Obviously, that's that's the unknown. Um, but you know, our 31 programs and 800 plus student athletes is is really it's in our DNA. It's part of who we are, and uh, uh, that is certainly not something uh, that we're we're looking at right now. Um, but we do have uh, we do continue to to have a lot of uh, a lot of unknowns around what the financial situation uh, would would be with some of these things, and so those are all things that uh, that we've uh, you know we're looking at scenario planning. Uh, and uh, and looking at uh, what uh, what steps we might need to take, but I think that the uh, you know our primary uh, focus is on holding this uh, holding our 31 programs or 800 plus student athletes together uh, and finding a way as Penn Staters and as a Penn State community uh, to come through this on the other side. Uh, and then, Rich, what was your second question? I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, would you be in favor or opposed to playing football games in empty stadiums? Yeah, obviously it's not the ideal. It's, uh, it's not what you, what you want to do. Um, but it also just depends on what our choices are. 
you know, what are the what what are we what are the scenarios that uh, that we're that we're faced with? Um, you know, uh, I'll go back to kind of one of our our major principles, and that is uh, we're not coming back uh, uh, to to campus. Um, whether it's students or whether it's student athletes, uh, they're not coming back to campus until it's it's safe and, and, and healthy and prudent uh, to do so. So I'm not sure uh, whether a situation where uh, it's not it's not wise or prudent to have uh, folks in the stands marries up with it's okay to have students back on campus. Mike Gross, Lancaster Newspapers. Hi, Sandy. I think your hair looks fabulous, by the way. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, um, have you heard anything from NCAA or from Big Ten or anybody about, um, for example, if you if you extend eligibility, do you increase the rosters? Uh, is football going to be able to, let's say, practice in July? There's lots of logistical things like that 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 uh, that anybody could think of. Have, have where where are you at with that, and what have you heard about that? Yeah, there are only about 10,000 of those, Mike, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, most of our uh, correspondence with the NCAA uh, is, is through the Big Ten. Um, and I, I'll, I'll put in a plug for, uh, for our new commissioner, uh, Kevin Warren, and, and his staff. They're doing a fabulous job um, of helping us navigate this. Uh, we convene as a, as a Big Ten athletics directors group um, every morning. Uh, obviously on the phone, uh, but uh, it's, uh, they, they've been terrific. And, uh, and so we're getting most of our NCA uh, information and NCA guidance uh, through, uh, through the Big Ten. Uh, but your, uh, your, your question was about the, the spring sport uh, eligibility extension and the NCA council. Again, that's th those are, those are, uh, those are members. Those are athletic directors and faculty reps and senior women's administrators and, and presidents. Uh, they made the decision to extend the, uh, the, the spring sport uh, eligibility uh, for all of those. And then they gave us the guidance uh, around what we're supposed to do from a, from a financial aid standpoint. So that's, that's already been done. Um, obviously, should, uh, should this continue, uh, then we'll need to, to continue to make uh, uh, additional decisions uh, about what to do with, uh, with, with future, um, future seasons. Um, I, I think we're, we're all collectively um, doing about the same thing as it relates to, to scenario planning and just making sure um, in, a, in a very uncertain environment uh, I mean, we, we stopped very quickly saying, okay, well, what if May won? What if June won? What if July won? What if, you know, whatever it is, and started looking at what's the runway we need? How much time so that we know when it's, it's health, it's uh, safe um, and healthy to do so, we know we need 60 days. We know we need this time frame. Um, and then we can look at... Uh, how to fit in what what it is we we want to do into that time frame. Greg Pickle, Penn Live. Hi, Sandy. How you doing? I'm good, Greg. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Uh, Coach Sanderson came out on social media, I believe it was yesterday, in, in favor of something that didn't happen, which is winter sports student athletes getting another year of eligibility as well. Do you plan to push the NCAA for that, or do you think that they made the decision on the spring sports, and that's kind of that at this point? Yeah, I, I mean, first of all, look, I, you know, this is this is really, really hard uh, for for these young men and and young women, and and uh, you, you know, uh, Coach Sanderson obviously was was standing up for for his guys and 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 his sport. Um, you know, when the NCAA Council um, made the decision, uh, that they did on, well, actually when they made the announcement on March 12th, I think it was, it was either 12th or 13th. Um, uh, you know, they said, we, we believe that spring sport, uh, student athletes fit the, the standard, uh, uh, or already existing waiver requirement, um, that, that we have, uh, and we're, we're going to look at the details of what that might be. Um, and at the same time, they said, we will look at whether or not winter sports um, also fit that, that standard criteria. Um, ultimately, when they made their decision on Monday, 
Um, they, they made a decision that, uh, that winter sports uh, did not. Um, and, you know, that's certainly, uh, that's certainly disappointing uh, to, to, to the young men and young women in our, in our winter sports. Uh, but, uh, and, and, you know, we're at Penn State, we're always about students and always uh, about opportunities. Um, but uh, I, I don't know that the, that the NCA or the NCA Council will, uh, will further examine that. We are going to Ben Jones, statecollege.com. Hey, Sandy, how's it going? Good, Ben. Um, Penn State and State College are obviously different governing bodies, but there's sort of a, a relationship there in terms of what they provide for each other. If a football season doesn't happen or even already, to what degree do you see State College as sort of a partner in getting through all of this? And, and if football doesn't happen, what do you think um, that you can kind of do together to get through all of that? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the, the, the most important thing you just said is, is partner and partnership. I mean, there's a symbiosis uh, here um, between the university and, uh, and the community um, in ways way beyond athletics. Certainly athletics is a big part of it, uh, and football is a big part of that, um, but it, it is truly a, a partnership. Um, it's a partnership around, you know, close to 40,000 students um, who, when we're, uh, uh, you know, when we're, we're fully uh, populated, uh, that, you know, those students are a big part of, of, uh, of this community. Um, so, that, you know, that's just another reason uh, why we're going to do absolutely everything we can um, to, uh, to have a football season in, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and, uh, and that's, uh, you know, we're going to do it. And I know I sound like a broken record, but it's really, really important um, that, it's, that it's clear where we're taking our advice from, which is from the experts and, uh, and from a medical perspective. And uh, when, it's, when it's time to do so, when it's safe to do so, uh, we're going to do it, and we're going to do it in a big way. Nate Bauer, Blue Eight Illustrated. Hey, Sandy. How are you? I'm good, Nate. What, you've lost your tan. What's going on? Uh, never had one. Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, a couple of weeks ago, Patrick Chambers uh, acknowledged that he's looking for a contract extension. Uh, I think he has two years left on steel. Um, is that something that you can move forward with? Is that, you know, do you have to put those things on hold and maybe even beyond him? Um, are all of those situations um, something that you have to put on hold? And how does that affect um, their ability to recruit moving forward? Yeah, we were, uh, uh, Pat and, uh, and his representatives, we, you know, we were in that conversation before, uh, before this happened. So, um, so uh, we, we've, we've, continued, uh, we've continued that conversation um, as well as a number of the other conversations that we were, were in, the, in the middle of. Um, now, certainly, um, you know, some of the institutional wide uh, uh, positions and, and obviously, again, you know, the unknown um, do, do limit us in some of the things we're, we're going to do. But, but there's, there's business that, that needs to continue as well. Looking for Bill Bowman somewhere in here. Uh, Bill Bowman, CNHI, Pennsylvania. Bill? Sorry about that. I had my own phone <laughs> muted as well. Um, it, uh, how frustrating on sort of a micro level is it for you personally? I hear you, you know, you harp on the words unknown and scenarios and, and things like that. I mean, and it's all sort of uh, precursored on you just, there's so many more unknowns outside of, that are outside of your control. Um, do you do you even have a an idea of when you're going to be able to wrap your head around you know when you start that runway that you talked about? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> first of all, Bill, you you know when you're dealing with uh, with athletic departments and coaches and athletics administrators, uh, you know we're we're all used to exerting the maximum amount of control we possibly can, uh, and uh, and and obviously this situation has has really turned that on its head. Um, I, I'll tell you, I'm not frustrated at all um, because we've focused on keeping our people together, keeping our people engaged. You know, the first couple of weeks we had uh, calls uh, with our head coaches every day. Uh, we had calls with our management team every day. 
uh, our campus leadership, uh, Eric Barron, uh, Nick Jones, our provost, uh, David Gray, our, our senior uh, vice president, C, uh, CFO, have been just fabulous. Um, I serve on, on the university's task force. Uh, and, you know, we are, we are laser focused uh, on making sure our students have what they need. Uh, and, uh, and that, you know, that was really heavy lifting uh, from, uh, from the beginning, at the beginning. Uh, you know, our, I give all the credit in the world to our faculty and our students who turned on a dime and went to, uh, went to remote teaching and, and remote learning. And that, that it certainly didn't go off without any hitches, um, but but went off with without very very few and a lot of people working behind the scenes really hard to uh, to, to make that to make that happen. So we've been uh, you know we've been going twelve hours a day uh, on uh, I've never talked so much in my life and you guys know I like to talk so that's a uh, that's a that's a big deal. Um, but uh, it's uh, you know we we've been focused on on making sure those in our care are. Uh, uh, have have what they need and and are connected. Obviously, uh, mental health is a is a huge huge challenge in our society today. Anyway, um, and as now everybody is uh, you know away from each other, uh, we've paid special attention um, to making sure that uh, that we're in touch with um, uh, with everybody in our department. Our coaches have done a phenomenal job of staying in touch uh, with their student athletes, with engaging them. Uh, and, uh, and it, it's, uh, you know, that, that's what we're focused on. And then obviously uh, behind the scenes, uh, we're, doing, uh, we're doing a lot of the, the financial analysis. Uh, we're making sure that we, we're scenario planning um, and that we're prepared uh, for whatever gets thrown our, our way. I mean, I think that's our job as, uh, as leaders. Uh, to uh, to make sure that uh, that we're prepared to to do the very very best we can. Mark Brennan, Lions two four seven, and uh, oh, well, maybe maybe not. There we go. Mark, Mark. Hey, can do you have me? I do. We got you. Appreciate it, Sandy. Hey, uh, down in Dallas, you laid out a little bit of what the plan was for the Lash Building Master Plan, and I think you said uh, you hope to have some of the design stuff in place by late summer or early fall. Uh, where is that standing at this point, and how sensitive are you going to have to be when you're trying to raise the sort of money that you're going to have to raise for this and other projects? Yeah, so uh, I, I think you all are probably all aware that the campus has put a has pressed pause um, on all construction uh, projects. Um, but in the case of the uh, of of the lash, uh, the next uh, couple of phases um, of the lash renov renovations, um, we actually are in design there. So that work uh, that work continues, uh, and certainly when uh, when we get back on campus, uh, and uh, we'll take our direction uh, from from university leadership uh, about construction. Um, certainly, we'll need to see where we are from a from a fundraising standpoint. Um, but obviously, we're we're committed to that as well as several other projects that were, uh, you know, on on uh, on the runway, uh, getting getting close to uh, to getting going. Uh, and uh, I do know this. Uh, that uh, that our alumni and, and donors and, and, and fans have been terrific. Um, we continue uh, our Nittany Lion Club and our, our development folks uh, continue to uh, to receive gifts and, and raise money uh, through this very challenging time for everyone. Uh, so I am I'm very confident um, that although the times may be uh, a little bit more challenging, uh, that when the time is right, that uh, that we'll have the opportunity to move forward with these things. Audrey Snyder, The Athletic. Hey, Sandy, good afternoon. Audrey, how you doing? I'm good, I appreciate your time. Uh, yep. You mentioned a few times that ramp up period and obviously it's, it's out of your control, but James had mentioned last week that you guys were starting to look at days and you mentioned 60 days. I mean, is that the ideal number for a football season that it would have to ideally th or 60 days before you could get going or what maybe is a little more uh, realistic? 
Yeah, I think um, I think that 60 days. Uh, now we've relied on uh, on our sports science folks, uh, strength and conditioning, what we call our, our performance team, uh, our uh, head team physician, uh, and uh, to really look at this from a health and safety standpoint. And uh, I think uh, we believe, given the given uh, the amount of time that that training has has been, uh, it's not off. Uh, our guys are are still finding uh, uh, ways to uh, ways to train and, and keep their fitness levels up. Um, but that for for football, we think that sixty day window is right about right. Peter Terpstra, WTAJ. Hey Sandy, um, I feel like people are worried whether it be worrying about a football season not happening or you know the protection of all of the sports programs going forward. So, what would be your message? Just to your, your average Penn State fan who doesn't have sports right now, um, your message to them going forward. Yeah, well, my message to them, to, to all great Penn Staters, would be number one, um, take care of your family, um, pay, pay attention uh, to them, uh, use this time uh, to, to your advantage in, in terms of that. Because, uh, you know, to be honest with you, uh, uh, I'm a worrier, and I, I worry about a lot of things. But what I'm most worried about are my three nieces and nephews who are who are on the front lines from a healthcare standpoint. And uh, and so you know that's I'm uh, I'm I'm focused uh, on that. But um, but I will I will say this uh, to to all great Penn Staters. Um, you know we'll be back. Uh, this is uh, this is not about sport. Uh, you know, this is far, far bigger uh, than, uh, than sport, but uh, uh, sport absolutely uh, will play a huge part uh, in bringing all of our communities back together again uh, when, the, when the time is right. And uh, I certainly know that that's true for Penn State and for the Penn State community uh, and for the State College uh, community uh, that uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to be back. Uh, at some point, we're going to be playing, and uh, it's going to be a way for our community to, uh, to to rally and come out of this on the right side. Dave Jones, Penn Live. Hi, Sandy, and thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. That looks like a really comfy chair, Dave. This is the way I work, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a good talk with your old friend, uh, Len DeLuca, this morning. Uh, um, the how NCAA is, and the, I'm how sorry? is Len? Uh, talkative as usual. Well, yeah, um, that's, that hasn't changed. <laughs> the NCAA and the Big Ten originally allowed uh, the hypothetical of events without fans, as Rich touched on. And then I think that was quickly rethought. Len believes that both morally and legally, if football's not safe enough for fans, then it's not safe enough for the athletes or the sport to take place. Otherwise, universities could open themselves up to legal liability. Is that your view? And secondly, if it is deemed unsafe in the near term in the fall, is spring football, say, February to May, because it goes within your fiscal year, is that a viable possibility? Yeah. So, so Dave, I, I, think, um, I think it was my answer to Josh's question um, earlier um, about, uh, you know, whether it would be feasible to play um, uh, in empty stadiums. Uh, you know, certainly mechanically it would be. Uh, but again, I don't see um, uh, uh, intersecting health and safety return to campuses by students, which would include student athletes. Uh, I don't see that uh, that mixing uh, with um, with the ability to play without uh, without fans. So um, I, I uh, mechanically it would work. Um, does it realistically work given the the, the health and safety? Uh, issues. Uh, we're not going to bring students back to campus until it's safe. So, yeah. Uh, and then your second question was? Spring football. Oh, spring yeah. football February to May. Yeah. Um, again, um, you know, I believe it's in, uh, in everyone's best interest uh, when, it's, uh, when it's safe and, and, and right to do so, um, that we play a football season. We've already talked about uh, the uh, you know kind of the the emotional and uh, and and the morale piece for communities across this country um, and then certainly uh, obviously there's a there's a, a revenue and a financial piece to it uh, so if uh, if our our return fits into into a time frame that we have to do it in a non-traditional 
uh, part of the year. Um, I think we'll all look to try to make that happen. Donnie Collins, Scranton Times Tribune. Nope. Donnie, where are you? Uh, his kid was having class. <laughs> all right. Well, that makes for the first priority. <laughs> uh, took, up his took up his bandwidth. That's right. That's right. Uh, we will move on to uh, Frank Bodani from the York Daily Record. Maybe. Maybe not. Apparently, maybe not. How about we move to Dennis Dodd from CBS Sports for the moment. Hi, Sandy. Dennis, how you doing? I, I'm good. Hunkered down like everybody else. Yep. Um, David Jones asked my question, but I, I had another one. Um, if you could uh, portray the need for you and your peers to, to play – football to access that TV rights revenue money um, in, in a tasteful way. I, I get, you know what I'm talking about just to make yeah. the budget whole. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, what I just talked about, I mean, I, I, I think um, there, there are a number of reasons uh, for uh, that, that, that this community, that this country um, needs, needs sport. Um, you know, some of those are, are emotional uh, some of those are from a connectivity and, and engagement uh, standpoint, um, but but obviously there are there are financial uh, financial realities uh, about that, and um, almost every football playing in collegiate institution, uh, the football program drives the train uh, from from a revenue standpoint. So um, obviously, it plays an important part. We will go to Neil Rudell. Uh, Neil is not on. Uh, so we will jump to Jonathan Bambouli from the uh, Pittsburgh Tribune Review. My colleagues have literally asked all the questions I had scribbled on this legal pad. I will pass. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> then we will move to Tyler Donahue from Lions 24-7. Hello, Sandy. Thank you for the insight this afternoon. Absolutely. Thanks for joining. Um, this is, whole conversation is so surreal, but I think it's been normalized the last few weeks. But just three weeks ago, before March Madness was officially announced as done, um, you know, when that happens, what was, can you quantify just losing March Madness from the college athletic scene, from the coffers? And additionally, on a local level, such a breakout season for Penn State basketball, going to finally get to that level and having it ripped away at such a at the last second, can you quantify all of that? Yeah, I don't know if I can quantify it. Um, I can certainly talk about it. Um, it's um, you know I'm a I, I I'm a huge basketball fan, born and raised on Tobacco Road, and and uh, it's. Uh, you know that that's we, we're we're seeing it. We're seeing what the what the hole is um, in our communities, in our society, without live sports. Um, and I think that uh, there's an appreciation um, that's being um, created um, that that maybe there's some opportunities for us uh, down down the road. Um, but uh, for Penn State in particular, because of the season that we were having um, in, in men's basketball. Um, I happened to be, um, I had flown to Indianapolis uh, on uh, that Thursday morning. Um, and uh, cause we were supposed to play that night. I had, I had not gone with the team on Wednesday because I, we were, uh, we were helping um, to manage through the university's initial um, announcement um, about uh, going, going remotely. Um, so I flew, uh, first thing, uh, Thursday morning, got to Indianapolis, took a cab to the arena where the guys were, were doing the shoot around, um, and literally on the bus, um, back to the hotel, um, I get a text from, uh, from the big 10 that, um, that we're having a conference call like in five minutes or something. And, um, and so I, I took that, and that was uh, that was to discuss the decision to uh, to shut down uh, the Big Ten tournament. Um, we also have uh, the um, uh, uh, we had uh, Jim Phillips uh, was a member of the um, of the committee, uh, the men's basketball committee. Um, obviously, the athletic director at Northwestern, 
and uh, he gave us a little bit of insight into uh, to the upcoming dis discussions um, with the NCA, and I think we all kind of knew um, where this was where this was headed, and that's uh, um, that was that was crushing. Uh, it really was. Um, I got off the phone and uh, went downstairs to where the men's team was uh, was having their uh, uh, their lunch or pregame meal. I'm not sure uh, what it was. And um, uh, and Pat had uh, had just found out from uh, from Lynn Holleran and uh, was telling the team. And um, that's uh, it, you know again with. All of us that have been around this for a long time have been through a lot of different stuff, but that's uh, that, that's really that's really really heartbreaking. Um, I'll tell you what, though, uh, uh, Lamar Stevens. Uh, we had a couple of student athletes on our uh, our all staff Zoom yesterday. Um, he uh, he he came in to give a little uh, uh, a few minutes uh, with uh, with our staff, and he was incredible. He was absolutely I incredible. Um, and, uh, uh, just really talking about his Penn state experience and, um, yeah, it didn't end the way, uh, he wanted it to, but, um, but that he wasn't going to let that take anything away from what he and his teammates had accomplished and, uh, and how he felt, uh, about Penn state and Penn staters and our community and the incredible support that they had received. So, um, you know, this is, this is hard for, uh, for all of us. Um, I know it's hard for, for our coaches. Um, it's, uh, you know, whether you, you uh, had your season ended right before a, a, an NCAA championship or, you know, you were coming down the, down the line on a, on a winter sport or uh, you were, you know, just getting ready to go into Big Ten play uh, in, a, in a spring sport. It's, it's, it's devastating. Uh, and, but it, uh, it's not – we're not going to let it – take anything away from the accomplishments uh, that, uh, that our teams um, either were, were about to, about to, uh, uh, to accomplish or already had or, or uh, you know, whatever the hopes and dreams were for, for spring sports. So um, it's, uh, it's something we can build on. It's certainly something that, um, that I know all of us are, uh, it, it's making us better. It's challenging us. Um, and I know for our students that 10 years from now, as heartbreaking as this is, and, and that heartbreak will never go away, um, but um, down the line, 10, 15, 20 years from now, this will make them uh, better husbands and wives and fathers and mothers and, and uh, citizens of the world, uh, just like, uh, like all of our challenges and setbacks do. We've got time for a couple more. We'll go with uh, Neil Rudell, Altoona Mirror. I was on listen only, but if you want a question, I'll ask one. <laughs> Feel free. I don't know Hi, Neil, if I do or I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, if this came up, I'm, I apologize. Have you guys, uh, what's the process with season football tickets? Are all of the payments already in? And what is that process? How's that taking shape? Yeah, so that's uh, that's part of um, of all the different scenarios that, that we're looking at. Um, yes, the the deadline uh, for uh, for retaining your season tickets and making your your payment and your required donation is uh, is in. Um, uh, I think our renewal rate was uh, was somewhere around ninety four percent, and um, we're uh, we're again looking at scenarios and and then how we might respond. Uh, to each and every one of those, so that when uh, uh, when we're we're ready to go or or we know more, um, we'll uh, we'll have a way to approach that. And last one, we'll go to CBS Twenty One. Hi, Sandy. How are you? Doing great. What, what, you you in a van? You're yeah, in a van? I'm out. I'm out in the field in the live truck. That's my that's my new office for now. Are you sitting outside my front door? No, no okay. <laughs> I'm out in City Island. Um, first off, right. thank you, thank you for the praise as a firefighter. Thank you very much for your thoughts. Uh, and secondly, have thank you reached you. out? Have you reached out to any of the students? Have they reached out to you? Like, how are they doing? Not being able to be on campus, be playing the sport that they love so much. 
Yeah, I've talked to uh, I've talked to a few of them. Uh, we did do the the Zoom last night, uh, and uh, and I've also been in touch with. Uh, again, you know, we're we're talking to our head coaches uh, now three times a week. It, it was. Uh, five uh, Monday through Friday uh, originally. Um, I'm talking uh, to our student development folks um, all the time and, and getting uh, kind of a pulse on, on how things are going. Um, you know what? Uh, like Lamar yesterday, I mean, you know, he admitted um, that it was, uh, you know, there were a few days there when he was down in the dumps, and I think we can all completely understand that. I've told a couple of our coaches, um, you know, I spent eight years as an assistant coach, and there, the I was never more um, depressed or kind of down in the dumps than when the season was over. The day, you know, the, the, the days or the week right after the season was over. Sometimes you knew the end was coming. Sometimes you lost out in the in the NCAA tournament earlier than you thought you were going to, and then, then that hits you. So, um, it, it's it's certainly understandable that L- Lamar was down in the dumps for uh, for a little bit, but he's clearly bounced back, looking towards his future, uh, being very grateful uh, about his his Penn State opportunity and his Penn State experience. And for the most part, that's what we're that's what we're finding. Um, you know, uh, student athletes uh, in general, and certainly Penn State student athletes, I think, are a really high character, resilient bunch. Uh, they're finding a way to get through this. They're taking on the challenges of remote learning. Uh, they might be in a house that, uh, you know, their mother or father or somebody else in the house is working and taking up the bandwidth, which is uh, challenging them from a, from a distance learning standpoint. Um, but, but we're trying to help them uh, with that as well. And I know that there's, uh, there's some cable companies across the country uh, that are providing free, um, uh, free internet access for, uh, for students. And uh, I think those things are just awesome about what our, what our country's doing. But um, uh, certainly, uh, our our students are you know they have individual uh, individual challenges that we're we're trying to help them with. We've got a great support team uh, for them. Um, I'm really really proud of the work uh, that uh, that our team is doing, meaning uh, our our athletic department and really pulling together, uh, taking on the challenges of doing doing everything by by Zoom or by phone um, in general. Folks have told me that it's it's kind of a 50% premium. I know our advisors, our academic advisors, are saying something that would take a half an hour uh, is now taking 45 minutes, or something that would take an hour is now taking an hour and a half. Uh, but uh, back to your question about about our students, um, I think in general um, they're anxious uh, to get back, uh, and but they're uh, you know they're putting their heads down and and. Taking, uh, we had uh, Destiny Weber from our softball team also on this uh, Zoom yesterday, and she said, you know, hey, I miss my teammates and I miss my sport, um, but but without uh, without the practice time, I can hit the books a little bit harder. So um, the little, little little silver lining perspective right there.